Martin, thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited to learn a little bit more about Finastra and who you are and who you're serving. Sure, sure. Finastra is the third largest fintech in the world. Uh, we have 10,000 employees just focused on financial software and we are delivering that software to 8,500 banks worldwide. From the smallest community bank in the US to the largest tier one bank in Europe or Asia. Well, third largest is quite the claim to fame that's extremely impressive. Yeah. But I'd love to learn a little bit more, um, shifting gears a little bit into regulation and how things like PSD2 and open banking are affecting financial services and how you're solving for those new challenges. Sure, sure. Uh, I think open banking is the biggest technology shift that has a huge influence on the banking world. Um, it just created two years ago. Uh, today we see open banking not just for PSD2, so the retail area, but uh, open finance in totality. So banks are trending more and more to open up the whole data center infrastructure to let fintechs attach to those banks and drive uh, collaboration and innovation together. And this is exactly what Finestra does in the, uh, did in the last two years. We have implemented a platform called FusionFabric.Cloud where we are letting fintechs, uh, innovators, independent software vendors, even schools and academic institutions develop new applications on top of that platform. So I think the biggest trend right now is open banking but also open platforms to drive open finance going forward. Absolutely and we're seeing the incumbents now not so much necessarily be disrupted by fintech but we are seeing that more of that collaboration but what else can these legacy banks be doing to keep up with the new challenger and neobanks? Well uh, our tagline is uh, collaboration is the new of way of innovation so so it perfectly fits to that trend. Um, but when you look at banks today, they are still, uh, the, especially the incumbents, they are slow, slow from a cultural perspective. Even if they have hired an innovation officer, the back end is still legacy. Legacy from a systems perspective, legacy from an infrastructure, legacy from the way they are innovating. And I think what they need going forward is better customer experience. And the way to achieve better customer experience is sometimes to collaborate with these fintechs that are just closer to the customer experience that the modern customer want to have. On the other side, I think banks want to drive more revenue, right? Margin compression, in bad interest rates, they want to have more top-line growth. And top-line growth can be achieved by connecting classical bank infrastructure to other industries. Could be health industry, could be insurance industry. So cross-selling other people's IP or other people's products. And a platform approach is ideal for that. So you mentioned customer experience, and that's obviously a major issue for a lot of the company's financial services. What's ultimately driving that customer experience? What is the ideal experience that a bank should be offering their consumers? Um, I always say the best customer experience, what I call, is unexpected delight. So whatever financial services you opt in, you want to be delighted in an unexpected way. So delivering, first of all, the, the best user experience in terms of the user interface is crucial, but also making sure that all the data you collect about your clients is reused and repurposed in the way that is beneficial for the client. What Amazon does on the B2C world, when you log into Amazon and you know the next best product, the same experience people expect now from B2B, and especially from the banking world. So if you talk to your relationship manager, they should know you, they should consult you, they should give you advice what the next best product is for you. I think that is what I would call unexpected delight. If suddenly your bank uh, person or your bank portal would know everything about you and can offer you the best next product. So you would say then personalization really should be a driving factor absolutely. that be, they should be focusing absolutely. on. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> no, that absolutely makes sense. And you know, I know you mentioned open banking and the APIs, but what other technology has you excited right now and that you're hopeful that banks will adopt or at least take the initiative. I know we hear a lot about AI, yeah. but what's going to be a game changer well, going forward? Well, a game changer I think is really AI mm -hmm. and the machine learning because what I just said, the personalization can only be driven by good data in the back and then the right machine learning algorithms on top. And that's the, therefore the first thing that banks really need to control is their data. The data that sits constant, currently in silos, they need to consolidate that. They need to have a more homo homogeneous look at their data. And then they can put AI and ML algorithms on top. So 
these algorithms then serve you in the right way at the point you need that service. Um, they know about you, they consult you. So all these things will really shape the whole financial world in a pretty different way, I think, going forward. Absolutely. Well, it's certainly exciting times in our industry, Martin. Thank Can't you agree so much. More. <laughs> Thank you so much for your insights. I really appreciate it. Thanks, you. It was a pleasure to be here. <laughs> From Medici Studio, I'm Shannon Rossick.